In this video, I am going to teach you about two important concepts in thyroid gland disorders. One is jod based of phenomena and the other one is wolf chekhov effect. There are a lot of questions which can come about these two uh, topics in, in the entrance examination or undergraduate and postgraduate theory examinations in general medicine. So very important concepts which you should learn. Okay, let us start with the topic now. This is a thyroid gland. All of you know that thyroid gland is composed of many follicles and each follicle is lined by follicular cells which has got a hepical surface and a basolateral surface. On the basolateral side, there is a transporter called sodium iodide symporter, NIS. The function of this symporter is to take up iodide from the blood into the follicular cell and this iodide is transferred into the follicular lumen or into the colloid with the help of a protein called pendrin. All of you know this pendrin protein, uh, this is coded by a gene called pendrin gene. Uh, mutation of this pendrin gene results in congenital hypothyroidism. Anyone can guess what, what is the other component of Pendrett syndrome? Yes, it is congenital hypothyroidism with SNHL, sensory neural hearing loss. SNHL occurs because the pendrin gene is present in the cochlea also and hence mutation of this pendrin gene results in a dysfunction of the cochlea leading to sensory neural hearing loss. Along with sodium iodide symporter on the basal lateral surface, there is a receptor called TSH receptor. The function of TSH receptor is whenever the TSH comes and acts on it, it is going to increase the production of cyclic AMP and which in turn increases the production of thyroglobulin and this thyroglobulin enters the follicle, thyroid follicle and in the thyroid follicle, thyroglobulin binds with iodide resulting in the formation of monoiodotyronine and diiodotyronine and this is called as iodination or also called as organification. Now there is something called coupling where two monoiodotyronine may combine to form diiodotyronine. When one monoiodotyronine and two diiodotyronine combine it forms triiodotyronine that is nothing but T3 you can get T4 also. And this coupling is done with the help of thyroid peroxidase enzyme which is present on the apical side. So whenever there is abnormality of this thyroid peroxidase also you can have hypothyroidism because of defect in the coupling process. Now the thyroid hormones are absorbed uh, via the follicular cell and is released into the blood. And this is going to act on the pituitary gland resulting in negative feedback and is going to suppress the TSH production. Now when there is chronic iodine deficiency, when does it occur? When there is a deficiency in the whole community like for example endemic goiter where there is a endemicity of iodine deficiency or it can occur sporadically also. So in this condition what happens is there is increased sodium iodide symporter on the surface of the follicular cell because the thyroid follicle is very hungry for iodine it is going to tell the sodium iodide symporters go to the surface and wait for the iodine now there are a lot of sodium iodide symporters which are coming and sitting on the basolateral side of the follicular cell waiting for the iodine to come in this scenario when you give iodine what happens the uh, sodium iodide as i told you sodium iodide symporter is very hungry and this will take up iodine rapidly and this will result in increased formation of T3, T4 and this is going to result in hyperthyroidism and this is known as jod based of phenomena. Since diarrhea is one of the important manifestation of jod based of phenomena and the diarrhea which occurs here is called as based of diarrhea. So let us revise when there is chronic iodine deficiency there is increased sodium iodide symporter brought onto the basolateral surface of the follicular cell and it is waiting for iodine when iodine is supplemented in this situation there is sudden increase in the uptake of iodine and sudden increase in the formation of T3, T4 resulting in hyperthyroidism and this is known as jod based of phenomena. Now on the other end, uh, when there is high iodine state in the body, what happens is that there is down regulation of sodium iodide symporter. Now the follicular cell is very saturated with iodine. It will tell the sodium iodide symporter that don't wait on the surface, you come inside. Uh, there is enough of iodine here, don't bring any iodine inside. So now what will happen is there is down regulation of sodium iodide symporter and this will result in hypothyroidism. This is known as Wolf-Chekhov effect. 
let us revise when there is high iodine state in the body there is down regulation of sodium iodide importer and this is going to result in hypothyroidism this is known as wolf check of effect let us see the case scenario now uh, to make you understand i'm giving you a imaginary case scenario this is not a real one this is a imaginary one uh, imagine a 50 year old female undergoes radio contrast study for the evaluation of a suspicious abdominal mass one month later she started to develop profuse sweating diarrhea and fast palpitations on examination she has got a, a temperature of 100 degree fahrenheit suggestive of fever pulse there is 140 beats per minute irregularly irregular in rhythm and volume this is suggestive of atrial fibrillation bp is 106 by 70 millimeters of mercury this is an average of three bp recordings i think all of you know that in case of atrial fibrillation we need to record bp three times and take average of three readings respiratory rate is 20 cycles per minute saturation is 98 percent on room air Cardiovascular system examination reveals tachycardia. S1 is variable, very typical of atrial fibrillation. S2 is normal. There is no S3, S4 or murmur. Respiratory system is normal. Abdomen is normal. Neurological examination reveals fine tremors of hands. Uh, on careful examination, there is diffuse tender goiter. This is suggestive of inflammation within the thyroid gland leading to thyroiditis and tender goiter. Her hold records reveals that one month ago, she had a low T4, normal T3 and high TSH. This is very clearly suggestive of primary hypothyroidism. Now the present TSH is very low, T3 is normal and T4 is high. This is suggestive of primary thyrotoxicosis. T4 is high, TSH is low, suggestive of primary thyrotoxicosis. Now what is the reason for this transition from primary hypothyroidism to primary thyrotoxicosis in a span of one month. The reason for this is increased production of thyroid hormones due to jod based of phenomena. Now why this jod based of phenomena occurred? It's because of the iodinated contrast agents. So the final impression is jod based of phenomena due to iodinated contrast agents. There is a very nice article which you can go through for detailed understanding. Uh, jod based o syndrome following oral iodine and radio iodinated antibody administration so in this article uh, it is stated that the jod based o phenomena occurs several weeks to months after receiving pharmacological doses of iodine containing radiographic contrast agents or iodine containing drugs or inorganic iodides this is about jod based o phenomena now, which are the agents which are uh, having very high iodine content radio contrast agents another agent is saturated solution of potassium iodide sski and amiodrone there are few interesting facts about amiodrone it is a type 3 antiarrhythmic drug structurally it is very similar to thyroid hormone and it contains 39 percent of iodine by weight so imagine almost nearly 40 percent of amiodrone contains iodine so this is going to pose the biggest problem to the thyroid gland now, when the dose is given more than 200 mg per day, it is going to provide very high iodine load to the body and resulting in 40 fold increase in the plasma and urinary iodine. It's a very significant number. Now, wolf Chekhov effect, what is the clinical implication of this? This effect is used in the therapy of thyrotoxicosis. Saturated solution of potassium iodide it is given before thyroidectomy for thyrotoxicosis to prevent thyroid storm. So this is about jod based of phenomena and wolf check of effect. These two topics are very important if you are preparing for entrance exam. Also it is important theory examinations also because this can be asked as a short note or short essay question. Thank you.